Hello everybody, welcome back to Scorum. My name is Rob and we are doing another haircut today on this fine looking gentleman here, Mr. Otto. Now Otto is usually one of the models that I use in our Barber Academy, the old school. Um, but due to circumstances, uh, I cannot do the demo on Otto this time. So we decided to make a video because I like his hair and I really love his trademark porn star mustache. And we are gonna go for a pompadour. Another pompadour? Yes, another pompadour. If you are done with the pompadours, this is the moment to turn the video off. It is gonna be interesting though, and especially what I think for you starting barbers that want to get some tips and tricks. Remember, even if you don't like a lesson or you don't like a haircut, it is still a lesson learned. Sometimes it's actually good to learn what not to do, right? Well, whatever you're going to take out of this video is fine by me. I'm going to have fun enjoying my haircut and showing you how I do it. Now, before I start, I want to show you and I am a lucky guy, right? I have been around the world a couple of times doing our hair shows, doing our demos. This is what I bring. This is literally what I bring. So I have my comb that I use for clipper over comb. I got my vent brush. I got a pick for my grooming. This is my cutting comb. And then I got my Mitsutani's, my blending scissors and my normal scissors and a blow dryer. Actually, I forgot my trimmer. I also bring a trimmer. But this is what I, this is all I need to do a proper haircut, yeah? Now, before I get started, as always, water. Oh no, actually, Otto, take a good look. Yeah, okay. Um, Otto, is uh, going to Finland for a couple of weeks. Holiday? Yes. Holiday. And he asked me to go short. He, wanted to, he, he asked me for a short pompadour. So that's what he's gonna get. Now, before I get started, I water the hair down. Yeah? And I think that a lot of you that might have seen one of our other videos, if you didn't, Check out the other videos. Maybe this is the right moment to subscribe to our channel. Yeah, especially if you want more. Um, I always water the hair down to look for the haircut hidden in the hair. Because whatever you can do with water, you can do with product. I actually find water the most important product that I need in my barber shop. I could cut without, you know, pomades and gels and everything, I could still do a great haircut, but without water, I'd be totally lost. Yeah, so I move the hair around. Now, Otto here asked for a pompadour. A pompadour comes in many forms and many shapes. And of course, you can find a lot of them on the posters that we made about what, eight, nine years ago? I did them with Yella, the guy holding the camera right now. See, there's a lot of different forms and shapes of the pompadour. I always say it's one of the most basic, classic haircuts worn by men and women. And it's actually named after a lady, Madame de Pompadour. Now, a pompadour, you, you have your uh, a 50s pompadour, like super rockabilly. When you do a 50s pompadour, it is usually length on top. There's a lot of combing going on. And then you got your longer fenders. Yeah, and they come together in a DA, yeah? It's funny that because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people pose pompadours with razor faded sides and call them classics. It's not really too, it's actually quite a modern haircut to do a pompadour razor faded size. It's just got that classic feel to it, yeah? What I'm gonna do today is a slightly more modern version of the pompadour because my client wants it a little bit shorter. My personal favorite is definitely the one with slightly longer sides, which you can find on our channel, 
yeah? Just look for the longer pompadour, the Elvis Presley pompadour. But today I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. Now, when you got your pompadour, see, no matter what changes on the sides, the pompadour, you're usually talking about the front of the haircut. That is where your pompadour is, right? Right over there. So it makes sense that I'm gonna take out the pompadour and save it till later. Yeah? So I'm gonna start. See, this is where my palm's gonna be. This here, this area here can change. You can do a razor fade, you can leave fenders. That's what I'm gonna start with. Yeah, so I'm gonna divide the hair in two. Yes, my whole palm is on top. So I'm just gonna save that till later. Now, there are different ways to approach the sides. You can use like a very traditional way of working, doing sections. Right, especially if you want to take, if you want to keep some length, but have a lot of control throughout your haircut, this would be a beautiful way of working. Very technical approach. Yes, you can use your scissor over comb technique. Yeah, you can flip on a guard, start fading away. Nothing wrong with that either. And then of course you have your skin fading technique, combing the hair down, boom, set in a line, fade it out later. All these techniques are absolutely perfect. Again, and like I say this in every video, this is not the best way, it's not the perfect way, it's one way. Please try it out and combine it with what you already know, right? Because that is in the end what you want. You wanna take as much information as possible from as many different people as possible. And that is why YouTube is so awesome, right? Take a little bit here, take a little bit there, but in the end, throw it all in a big pot, stir it around and your personal way of working will come out. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start with my baseline. So I'm gonna lift all this hair up. Now, funny thing is, I just did a training with Martin. Hello, everybody. The fluffy muffin. The very fluffy muffin. <laughs> and he wanted to do a James Dean uh, kind of haircut, which you can find on our Instagram page or whatever. But the thing is, I showed him how to do a longer cut working with the baseline. And, and I kept repeating, the magic is in the hair under there. Comb it all up in a straight line so it becomes part of the haircut, yeah? Setting your baseline. Now, the trick with this baseline is knowing where your body is throughout the haircut. See, I'm always right behind my work, lifting this all up and moving around the model, yeah? This is the side, yeah? And here, you're gonna transfer into that nape area. So if you wanna keep a bit of length to do a DA, you're gonna keep it a little bit longer. If you wanna go super short, you step into the haircut, yeah? So see the position of your arms doesn't change. The position of your hands doesn't change. The position of your body compared to the haircut. That's what changes, yeah? So you gotta find a certain rhythm in your work. Move. Move. Yes, now by lifting all that hair up, see in the same direction, the hair under there becomes part of your guideline. Yeah? So if I check now, see, this first line is cut and I got this roll of hair sticking out under there. Yeah? The only thing I gotta do is look for my previous cut line and connect the hairs under that line to that previous cut baseline. Yes, one, two, see, look. So my trick is not to look at the hairs I'm cutting off, 
I look at the hairs I already cut off. Yeah? And that's what I'm taking away. So I'm following that line. So up, 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 up. That way you're always in control of the length you're setting in down, down, down. Now, if you check your line right now, you will see that what you set in is your transition into the hair on top, yeah? So I don't have to worry about how I'm gonna connect the hairs on top to my, uh, what's the word again? Parial ridge. Yeah, I think that's it. Remember, I'm a Dutchie. These are hard words, guys. Now, that means that because this line is all set, I can go as short as I want under that line. So for me, it's all about it because I can do whatever I want under the previous cut baseline. Yeah, so if you wanna go for a skin fade, please be my guest. Go for your skin fade. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, as long as you do not touch the previous cut baseline. So if you wanna flip on a guard right here, flip on a guard. See, look for that previous cut line. One, two. Short. So, all oh my hairdressing friends out there the only thing you got to understand when you're doing um, clipper over comb is that the way you're using your comb is exactly the same way as you would use your finger so if you know how to do a graduated bob yeah you pretty much know what to do with your comb nothing changes it just gets closer to the skin so this means more length on top. This means more length on top. That means even more length. This is almost like a one length. Yeah? Shorter, 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 shorter on top. The tip of your comb always reveals the length on top. Yeah? So I'm gonna remove hair. Now for me, this is what I like to call my sketch. because I just want to remove a lot of hair to clear up so I can see what the cut's gonna look like. Yeah, clean up, clean up. Yes? Okay, now you can continue throughout your parietal ridge, but to speed up the video a little bit, See, it is actually quite a fast way of working and removing a lot of hair. Once you remove a lot of that hair, what I usually, what I usually do is this. This is where the ear is attached to the head, right? That is gonna guide me right through the highest point on the head. That is gonna be my crown area section. Yes? Now, again, I wanna remove as much hair as fast as possible. You gotta understand because in the comments on some other videos, people say, 
that is a very slow way or that is way too much where I can do this way faster. Yes, she can do it way faster. I get that. There, there are definitely different ways and other ways. And again, do it, do it however you want. But I like this way because I'm in control. But see, I talk during this video. I want to make it interesting. I want to explain the ways I work. But normally when I would be working in the shop, I mean, I'm going to skip the whole explaining part. And then it's actually, I get to the blow drying in what, like eight minutes, 10 minutes tops. So, and then that means I got like 20, 30 minutes left to perfect my haircut, yeah? So I'm taking a section within that crown area and I'm gonna over direct that section and connect it to that previous cut baseline. Yes, stepping in again. Um, yeah, so lift, over direct, connect, and now I'm kind of stepping in till I find the previous cut baseline. Yeah, and turn. And in that way, so you get this nice graduated slide into that nape area. Yes, continue that process. So take in another section. Make sure that the hair has an even dampness throughout the cut. Over direct, over direct, lift. One, stepping in, using the crown as a pivot. Now, of course you all heard that term, using the crown as a pivot. If you are training one of your apprentices, 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 I usually explain like try to try to make them see it like this. There is a there is a rope on the highest point of the head, and that is how you make sure you are always in the right position in the haircut. Yeah? That is your pivot point. You want to know where you are throughout the haircut. So that is how I connect. See, I twist. till all the hair is connected. So if you know how to do that perfect, beautiful fade, yeah, this is the way to really fast connect the hair on top. Yeah, boom, crown area. Now I'm gonna take out a triangle. I follow that natural fall of the hair. This triangle here, this is where your pompadour is. This is where all the cool hair is. That is, that is the hair you're gonna see on the photo in your Tinder profile. I think I made that joke in another video, didn't I? Fuck the Tinder profile then. Yeah, I'm gonna take a section about as wide as my comb. Yes. Now, remember that baseline that's under there? I want to connect that in a quite a loose way. So I'm going to comb the hair onto my fingers, lift it, no tension, lift it a little bit higher and add slight tension. Yes, take the hair from that previous cut line and connect. And continue that process up. Take the hair, move back, and again, I think this is underestimated by a lot of people, body position. Knowing where your body is throughout the haircut. 
That also means that, see, you don't want to twist your wrists or arms in positions they don't want to go. It's very, very bad for your joints. So what I do is I comb the hair where I want it, and then I step into a position which is not going to put any pressure on my joints without moving. See, bring it to where I want and find the position, the position that is easy on the joints of my body. I always want to keep this in straight lines, yeah? So don't put any pressure on there. Boom. And boom. See, that is a very fast way of connecting all that hair on top. Of course, there is still a little bit bulk there, but we're gonna save that till later. We got our pompadour here. I don't know exactly what to do with it yet. Even then this. Yes, I kind of like that length, but I want it to be easy to manage for my client. So I'm going to take a section within that first triangle. Yes, if you want to keep all the length, you can go for a completely disconnected look, which actually looks super nice. Yeah, so you can keep all that length, so you're going to get a slight undercut. I do want to have a connection, so I very loosely connect that hair to that previous cut baseline there. Yeah, if you want to double check yourself, just lift it a little bit. See, there is your line, and by lifting, you will always get a little bit of graduation. There you go. Yes, all the hair down. Visually connect, yeah? So just using your eyes. It's okay that it's a little, you know, freehand. That works. Hair, cutting hair is not like building a wall with bricks. It's not like one brick, one brick. No, hair moves around, right? It's an organic product. So treat it that way. By working this way, see, you have a connection into the hair on top with a lot of length left. So if you want to go for your Johnny Depp crybaby look, that's the way to do it. If you want to go shorter, if you're like, yeah, but my client asked for a super short pompadour, you can go shorter by taking the hair up. But we're going to do that later on in the cut and go shorter. But then you still get the fullness of your pompadour because it's loosely connected. Yeah, so that is really how you hide a lot of length in a relatively short pomp. I am going to repeat that exact process on the other side of the haircut. Wet it down. Up. Lifting all the hair up, baseline, move. Okay, 
So when you finish both sides, you could actually already dry the hair and you would go for your uh, very long pump, yeah? Honestly, I really, really love that look. But since my model is going on his vacation, I'm gonna go a little shorter. So I'm gonna take one section through the middle And I'm gonna set in the length I wanna work with. Yeah, so lifting this all up, looking at my previous cut crown area and slightly round it off. Up. up to your desired length. Yes, what I like to do is just take all that remaining hair up. It's not going to be a lot and connect it by slightly over it, directing it to the middle, yeah? By slightly over directing it to the middle, you're gonna keep your square angle super full, which is gonna work really, really nice for your palm door. So up and connect. Repeat on the other side, pulling it all to the middle, over directing. See, and because I'm taking quite big chunks of hair, I use a point cutting technique to blend these lengths through. Okay. Checking for balance and length in the mirror. Yes, that is definitely gonna work. Yeah, now I know there is still a lot of work to do, but I hope that you can see and tell that the basic shape of my pompadour is already there. And when the hair is still wet, this is pretty much what the haircut will look like with a product. Yeah, so that really tells me I am on the right way. I'm gonna dry the hair and I'm gonna perfect my details, right? I'm gonna check, especially when I'm drying the hair, I'm gonna check if it's not too heavy. Yeah, if it's very easy to dry and stay in the right place with just um, loosely drying the hair, then I, gotta, then I got the perfect length. If it still wants to fall down because of gravity and weight, I know I have to use some texturizing techniques to make it a little bit lighter. Of course, I'm gonna use the old grooming tonic one of my favorite products. I said it once, I said it before, I'm gonna say it many, 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 many times again. When you wanna dry the hair and you wanna make it a little bit more pliable, that's when you grab the grooming tonic. If you wanna dry and you wanna create a lot of height, you can actually add a little bit of our fiber gel. It's gonna make it a little bit stronger, then you can go for that super high pompadour or teddy boy or whatever you wanna create, yeah? Divide the product over there. And our next step, vent brush and blow dry. Okay, <laughs> medium heat, full strength. the hair into the direction I cut it and then I start by drying the roots like this. Mm -hmm. 
notice that I dry the hair as natural as possible. The easier it is for me to dry, so without forcing it into a direction it doesn't want to go, the easier it's going to be for the client to re recreate his look the next day. For me, this is the most important thing. If you give a client a haircut he cannot recreate at home, it is and always be a shitty haircut, right? I want it to make it easy for him, so dry it loosely. Do not be afraid to use your fingers. The moment you are using your fingers to dry the hair, you're actually showing the client that it's gonna be easy for him to do it at home, yeah? So direction, just finger dry. See, just by moving the hair around with your fingers, loosening it up, and then you take your vent brush and you give it a little bit of final direction. can tell that this is already looking nice yeah a lot of a lot of weight in those angles what I told you guys before yeah and a lot of nice movement going on in that pompadour area but I still have a lot of hair to work with yeah? so but now because of the basic technique that I used See, all of a sudden, I know exactly what to do. The hair kind of tells me what to do. So I'm gonna clean up the sides using a clipper over comb, uh, and I'm gonna take out bulk, yeah? So I have a nice uh, transition into the hair on top. Once I've done that, I wanna add a lot of texture in the hair on top, so it's gonna be easy for my client to reproduce at home. So I want a classic, pompadour but I definitely want to have texture and movement because I want him to be able to change his look day by day here we go okay so you comb the hair into the position position you want to have. Now, I like it to look old school, so I'm going to go really short in, in that start area, do a low fade, and then when I'm transitioning into the hair, see, by combing it, the hair guides me through the shape of the cut. So look for bulk, lift, 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 Pretty much the way you cut it between the fingers. See, and that is a beautiful way of taking out extra weight and really setting the shape of that cut. The other thing is, when you're fading, don't be fooled by color change, yeah? Um, especially, well, um, on blonde hair, this is, this is some beautiful hair. It is quite thick, but you know, it's a, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fine hair. Yeah, so the density, see here it's a little lighter, moving into a little bit darker. So you kind of got to play with that, but trust, trust your length on your comb. Don't get fooled by the color of the hair. Yeah? Okay, so my, my thing in the shop is, yeah. Trying to find a way to set in that basic cut, that, that, that sketch, as fast as possible. So you got a lot of time left to perfect your haircut. Because, especially if you watch our other videos, you will see. I mean, I can actually imagine that it's kind of boring because I use the same technique over and over again. But that is the thing, it took so long to perfect that technique, but it works on every haircut. So 
That basic technique is to get that basic shape. So you got a lot of time to really put your signature into the haircut, right? So if you are more like, oh man, I wanna go super short in that nave area, you can do that, right? Just scoop that in. Yeah, I really like to keep this area on the crown a little fuller. See, so we got a bit of a DA action going on there. But if your personal taste is more like, I wanna go super short here, do it because the basic shape is there, right? Take all the time you need to make the haircut fun for you and as wearable and good looking as possible for your client. Yeah? Okay, I'm gonna use different uh, texturizing techniques to remove bulk. See, I'm really starting to like the shape of the cut. I like that there is length, I like that it's you know, it's got the volume. I accentuated that a little bit by going just slightly shorter, right under the pompadour. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna take sections of hair, and just kinda take weight out of him by following the shape of the cut. Just take out a little bit of weight with my blenders. Not too much, because you don't wanna go into the shape of the cut. So I'm not taking out length, I'm just softening up the ends of my hair, my sections. So boom. Flip. Lifting it up, look for bulk, but when you're done, you're done. Don't overdo it, don't take out too much hair. You just want to make the hair easier to move around. These are brutal. I treat them, I use them the way I would use my normal scissors. See, by lifting it up, looking at the direction of the hair, and just taking out little pieces of hair, just to make the hair more fluent. Yeah, so I'm using a combination of blending scissors and normal scissors. Yeah, just. If you take out shorter hairs on that crown area, you get a little bit of a Velcro working. Those little hairs are gonna push up, but also hold the longer hairs in place. So you don't want too much, but a few are actually gonna make the hair stick together. And while working, Keep using your eyes, look for balance. 
and look for bulk. Slide the hair through your fingers, follow the natural shape of the skull, plus the natural movement of the hair, and blend that all. So, pretty much final look. I know when my hair gets ready, when I can comb it with my fingers, and wherever I bring it, there is a good feel to the cut. So I can tell, like, it, I, I can go for an extreme version, you know, like super high, but there is enough length to slick it back more, and there is enough texture for Otto to pretty much wear it the way he wants it. Yeah, I really love how his hair is opening up here. You know, there is a really nice shape, nice texture. So I'm gonna add a little bit of product. I'm gonna go for a little bit of our Rusal clay, which has a matte finish. I really like the texture that's going on, and of course, it's washable. I might add a little bit of the green on the sides, just to give it a little bit more of a shiny look. Now, if you want a light grooming, you can pretty much just like go over the top. See that is a very, now most of the product is still on my hands, but you got enough lift and movement to work through the hair. I like that, but I also like it to be just a little bit more, not too much. See, easy to work with. See, this is just my first styling with only the clay. I really like that there is movement, it's matte, and it's still moving around. So this is, this is like your daily wear of the pompadour, yeah? Um, we're gonna shoot this one outside, yeah? Just a couple of photos, because this is, this is again, your daily look. This is how a client would style his hair if you wanna go out fast, Right, and I really like how it's pretty flat in this area, super short on the sides. So um, a lot of action here in the front. When I'm done, we're gonna take a couple of more photos when it's a little bit more rockabilly. Um, and you can find all of these end results on our Facebook and Instagram page. I really hope you guys had a good time. I had a great time because pff, I love doing haircuts. And again, maybe there were just little details that help you a little bit. That's why we're making these videos. If you wanna know more, go to our website. You can find all our courses on the Old School Barber Academy. Um, and I hope to see you one day in Rotterdam so I can show you mano a mano. What is it? One on one. One on one. Well, whatever. See you soon. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Good work. Good work, eh? Yeah.